So this render is a bit of a mind fuck, but I swear to God, it's not as complicated as it looks. So it's gonna be a few nodes in geometry nodes. I'm gonna show you how to make it, and then we can uh, all go home and, you know, drink. I, I don't know what we're gonna do. Let's get into it. But before we get into the tutorial, I just wanna say this blend file is gonna be available on Patreon for you to download, so you can just like get the finished product and look at the nodes and get access to all other blends that I made over the last three to four years. And if you wanna hire me for any freelance work for your film, project, whatever, especially if it's geometry nodes related, uh, you can contact me at cgmatter.com. Let's get into the tutorial. So I'm gonna start a new project and go to geometry nodes, delete everything and add in a cube. And basically what I'm gonna do in geometry nodes is I'm gonna make a cube of cubes that are rotating. And then I'm gonna take that and make a cube of those components that are rotating. It's gonna be recursive. Point is make this a geo nodes group and we wanna make a cube of cubes. So I'm gonna instance on each of these points itself, right? So for each vertex of the cube, put a cube. <laughs> uh, take the scale and bring it down. This is just so we can see the individual components. And now all I have to do is kind of rotate this like a Rubik's cube. And I want it to rotate on two different axes. Uh, to rotate, we have a bunch of instances. So I'm going to translate instances. Nope, <laughs> I'm going to rotate instances. I'm literally describing how I'm gonna rotate it. And then I'm like, oh, translate instances. Uh, we're gonna use rotate instances. This is gonna let us rotate the things, but not on a local space on a global space that rotates the thing entirely. Uh, for the selection, I'm going to say let's isolate the top half. So if we look at the position of the Z component, it's basically going to look at the sign of this. Uh, point being, it's only going to spin the top half, uh, which is kind of a cool little trick. So uh, if we now make a function for this that spins and then stops and then spins and then stops, uh, we're going to be golden. So your instinct might be to use the uh, time thing. So it just kind of keeps rotating. Uh, issue with this is it doesn't ever stop. So I want it to stop and then we're going to rotate on a different axis, right? So what I can do is I can run this through. I'm going to run this through a ceiling that is going to basically quantize it. So it's going to round to the nearest integer. And then we run this through a modulo two, which means it's going to freeze uh, every other second. And if we then multiply this by time, it's gonna look like it works. So it's spinning and then freezes, spinning and then freezes, although it doesn't do a full rotation. This is because it's only freed for one second and it needs to do uh, 90 degrees, which is pi over two. So I'm gonna multiply this by pi over two. And now we have a half a rotation or a quarter rotation stop, quarter rotation stop, quarter rotation stop. Uh, here are the math nodes again uh, to do that. Uh, if I now take this and I rotate instances again using kind of a similar idea, so I'm just going to copy this over, uh, but this time I'm going to use the x-axis and I'm going to separate by the x-axis, so I'm just doing it on a different axis. If I do this now, it's going to kind of do this weird deformation thing. Uh, we want to do only one at a time, so I'm going to offset this one by one second. So it's going to rotate and then the other axis rotate and then the other axis. So they're oscillating, but they're like a period apart in some sense. So this is how I made the base unit of the rotation. Um, one way to think about this is we took a input and then did all of this with it. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, let's make this into a node group. So I'm going to take this, put it to the side, all of this turn it into a node group. So the way you can think about this is we made a cube of cubes and then we applied this transformation. Now we can instance on points for the original cube, this thing. So now it's getting a bit more complex. So I'm saying for each cube, put that rotating thing we made. Uh, we need to make these a bit smaller so you can see them. And I guess we should make them even smaller so that they don't intersect. It's fine if they intersect a little. And now we have a cube of cubes that do this thing. Uh, to make it look more dynamic, we can literally just take this node group and copy it over. And now we have like a complicated thing going on over here. Although it's kind of like too much in sync. So in this uh, node group, I'm gonna open it up. Uh, notice that we have a uh, two second parameters. Uh, so I can actually just connect these here. And I'm just gonna offset all of this by one second. And this is gonna just make it look way more confusing, which is what we want. You wanna be not able to follow this. So this is kind of the general uh, thing. 
Uh, for the rest of this, I basically said, uh, for some of these, turn them into like a wireframe. Uh, so let me show you how to do that. So we basically have a bunch of instances. Uh, what I can do is I can uh, capture an attribute. And for that attribute, let's use a random number. And we'll make that a Boolean, so it's either on or off. And I'm going to do this for instance. So basically, we're looking at the instances and we're saying for each instance, either give it a 0 or a 1 randomly. This is going to carry over so that when we realize these instances and we separate them, we can separate by this attribute. So you can see we have part of the mesh and this updates every rotation and then we have the other part of the mesh. For half of this, what I did, as I said, take a mesh to curve and then join it with everything else. So I'm splitting it into two sections. For half of it, turn it into a curve. For half of it, preserve it. And you can kind of tell what's going on if I select this. Uh, for the mesh to curve section, I also want it to go back into a mesh. So curve to mesh. It's a bit confusing. I'm going to use a circle here. Make that smaller. And now we have, let's make that even smaller. And now we have part of this being a wireframe. You can control the distribution of this by uh, changing the uh, random value. So the closer this is to one, uh, more of them are gonna be wireframes. And if it's close to zero, they're all gonna be solid. So something like that uh, looks pretty dynamic. Um, at this point, all I did is I kind of set it up for a render. So I just kind of put a camera, not inside of it, this is not an OBGYN. Let's zoom out. I put a camera right around here. And I set the render not to be EV or cycles, but actually workbench. Uh, the cool thing about workbench is if you enable shadow and cavity and outline, and that's about it. I'm going to set this to both. Uh, you get a very cool kind of gray uh, render with a lot of dimension. And you can change the look of this and even go for different kinds of uh, looks right here. So uh, that is generally the effect. Uh, hopefully you learned something. And again, uh, this project file, the finished one, is gonna be available on Patreon for you to download. And again, uh, you can go to my website, cgmatter.com, to hire me for any freelance stuff. Thanks for watching.